That's why you need your trials. Because God uses those. And you, you have to prove to him that you're going to obey him. And when the whole world is against you, you have to say, I'm, I'm sticking with God's law. And what's in front of me is not telling me to do the right thing. Because I've read this Bible and I know that I'm supposed to go the other direction. And you just do it. You just do it. Then the change happens in you. It makes you stronger. Then in verse 14, we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and the cunning craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. And so, we have to use the combination of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and God's law to come into the maturity of Christ and then we'll have unity instead of disarray. Wow. That's, right. That's how to have the unity. You know, I heard, I heard a, a minister counsel about marriages when I was new in the church. Doug was there. He remembers this. Mr. Dick said that no matter how far apart you two are, if you're growing towards Christ, you're growing together. So that is true of this group as well as a husband and wife. If we're all growing towards Christ, then we're all coming together whether we aim to or we don't. The goal is to aim for Christ. Because the closer we become to Yeshua Messiah, the closer we are to each other by default. That's how to gain the unity. Starts by learning the laws and applying them. Starts by praying in tongues, often and regular, especially as you're studying. Then there's an order and a structure to every organism. Amen? Come on, we've all had, we've all had the ninth grade biology. There's an order and, and to every structure. The, the cytoplasm can't decide it's going to be the nucleus. The mitochondria can't decide they're going to be the lycocells. I mean, come on, you, every piece in the body has a part to play. What if your liver decided it was going to be your brain? <laughs> There's a joke with this, I'm not going to go there, but, you know, but the parts of the body and their argument over who's the greatest... <laughs> So when you have elders and deacons and prophets, that's an order to the body. That means you've got to work inside that order. Don't freestyle it. Work inside the order that's already here because we just read that Jesus has already put this in place for your success. Come on, somebody. The problem comes in when folks want to play somebody else's role. Woo, we each got a role. You got to follow the one you've been given. Are you ordained? That's your role. Amen? Amen. You got somebody to ordain, that's their role. Trust me, they didn't come to me and ask for it. Nobody came up to me and put some money on the table. Oh, Pastor, Pastor Andy, I'll give you $200 if you ordain me. <laughs> no, one, no one saw it coming. <laughs> no times. <laughs> The thing is, God's the one that tells me who to ordain and when to ordain you. And once he tells me that, I'm getting oil on you one way or the other. Why? Because I don't want to be negligent. If he tells me you got to have oil on you, it's coming. I don't care if i got to get in a squirt bottle and shoot across the room. I don't want to be negligent. If he says you got to be ordained, we're going to get you ordained. Because I don't want to take a lead and go, why didn't you ordain brother so-and-so? I couldn't get to him, Lord. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So now, what if you're not ordained, but you really want to help? Help. Go to the ordained person who's doing that and volunteer. Yep. It's not that difficult. Trust me, we are so short-handed all the time at Hungry Hearts. Amen. There is never a time you won't be drafted. Come on. People were, oh, oh, but my sister, two people told me today, one of them said this, I'll do whatever you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> so go to the person who's in charge and volunteer. Okay, what if they turn you down that time? Go back and volunteer again. Maybe they already got it covered today. Maybe you didn't come in time. Go back and talk to them again. 
keep going and show yourself approved by being dependable. You know, if you're supposed to come and set up and you come 10 minutes to service, it's obviously done already. Right. You know, if the setup crew's there at 930, then if you want to set up, you've got to be there at 930. Amen. Yeah. I, mean, you, I mean, you know, you got it. you got to be dependable. And you got to keep your word. You know, it's an integrity thing. Again. you got to keep your word. You give your word you're going to come and set up, then you got to make sure you're going to come and set up. Well, maybe you've got to get up two hours early. I don't know. But if you're going to be dependable, you're going to have to make sacrifices. Amen? Amen. The rest of us do. And then you've got to follow through with everything you're given to do. So if you're given to go out to a certain medical park and distribute magazines, and then you don't ever get around to it, then your volunteering was all empty talk, amen? amen. you got to follow through with what you said you were going to do because, you see, the work has to go forward. And it takes a lot of volunteers, and it takes a lot of workers, and there's plenty of things to do, trust me. There's plenty of things to do to, to build this up and to get it where it needs to go. Why are we building it up? Let me ask you a question. How many places do you know that teaches the truth that lets you pray in tongues and worship in the Spirit and that are set up structurally for you to have an encounter with the living Jesus. I don't know a whole lot. And the, and the handful that I was told were doing the same thing we are, when I got there, they weren't doing the same thing. Now, I'm not running them down. They're doing. They're running their program. They're doing what they do. They're happy with it. Hey, I'm all, I'm all great to be, be friends with them. Right? Right hand of fellowship. Amen. On the other hand, how many of them are going to be this serious, this dedicated, all the time, every time? Yeah. That's why you're doing it. Because God has other people just like you who want, just like you, to have this level. And if they want it and you want it, don't you think we ought to be good enough to give them that helping hand to have it? Amen? Because this ain't a lot of places. I've been a lot of places. I said, I've, been, I've been doing this for 30 years. And I don't know a lot of places that do everything we do that press in the way we press in. They say, I haven't been to any of them, actually. Now, this is a sole proprietorship, and for good reason. And I'm not going to go through the litany of the times we've been kicked out of church. Amen? <laughs> Sermon out, wrapping it up. We tried the other ways. Miss Sandy was there. She knows. We tried all the other ways. We've tried every other way possible. We have a work to do. We're going to do it. We're not going to stop until the Lord blows the shofar, which means time is over. Amen. Amen. With the Lord, I don't want to give too much away. No, no, man. I've too much in my mind. I, I don't tell him what I'm going to give away. One of the things the Lord was showing me is that if we get after this at full speed, we won't even notice until the shofar blows. Yeah. We'll be too busy getting it done to worry about it. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to study that stuff and teach it because I'm a prophecy teacher. It's what I do. But on the other hand, as we see the time growing closer, we need to be working all the harder. Oh, this ain't no time for a rest. Oh. I'm as physically exhausted as a human being can be and still function. I personally could use two weeks off. You knew how close it was. Take two weeks off? Are you kidding me? We don't have two weeks. We don't know how long this is going to take. But you know, it's a good likelihood that next year is over. The Lord's told me over and over again, we may not have next year. North Korea has nukes on a sub that they can pop over the United States at any time. Once the EMP goes off from the United States, there will be no more work. You will be destitute and scuffling in the woods for water and nuts. Y'all think I'm playing. I'm not playing. All work will be over. Subsistence will be your only objective all day, every day. How are you going to teach in that environment? Who's going to want to listen to you after that? Anybody that's talking to you is going to be wanting to take what you got. I want your acorns and I'll kill you for them. <laughs> I'm not playing. I mean, I wish I was. It's all funny on this side. Of it. We have to work while we have time to work. We have to work while we have ability to work. How do you think we're going to have church meetings when nobody's car works? 
We're not. It's the United States of America. Nothing's close enough to walk to it. You're going to be stuck at your house. What are you going to do? Are you going to keep Shabbat? Yep. Are you going to stop working? Your only subsistence and hauling water? Are you going to haul twice as much on Friday? Yep. Mm -hmm. See, you got to have this in you, man. you got to have it in you. How are you going to keep time? you got to calculate holy days, amen. How are you going to calculate time? Yeah, forget about Marley and Israel, yeah. That's going to be completely irrelevant. So we have work to do. We're going to do it. This is the work of Elder Bill Schultz, a newly ordained elder in the Church of God. And you've been called to work here. You're here. You've been called to work here. You weren't called to work out there. You were called to work here for the kingdom of God. Now, my pledge to you has always been the same since we started. Sandy can tell you it's been this from the whole time. I'm going to maintain doctrinal and financial integrity and purity. We're never going to veer off right or left. We're going to keep our course dead center. Zero, 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 kingdom of God. Amen. What better place you want to work? Therefore, I'm asking you, as we get into this Pentecost weekend, to put everything else in your life aside. And let's get to work and finish this thing. Pray, Heavenly Father, I thank you, I praise you, I glorify you. Be lifted up, magnified, and exalted in this assembly right now, Lord. I'm asking that you would send us a demonstration of your Spirit's power to confirm the word of your servant to your people. Lord, as we fire up the worship music, I'm just asking for such a powerful move of your Spirit in the hearts and the minds of every person here, Lord, that this will be one of the most intense worship experiences any of us has ever had. That Anybody from the newest person that's just learning how to worship in the songs to the most dedicated prayer warrior who can get lay on their face and go to the third heaven, Lord, I'm asking for a new, new and more powerful uh, ex revealing of yourself in the hearts and the minds of everybody here, Lord. I'm asking that your presence be so tangible in every life that no one will be able to deny you are here this night, this day, this Pentecost. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. Amen.